Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel. Uh, today, guys, let hear what are uh, people think about the uh, set today, and uh, I can play it. Let's play it, guys, and hear what's going on, and I'll update you what's going on. Let's see what other top analysts are saying. Let's get into it. Many bankers in our country uh, didn't have never lived in a rising interest rate environment or a higher interest rate environment. They've never done it. And so there's a lot of learning that needs to do, needs to take place. And moreover, um, we have a lot of existing debt out there that is at very low prices. Um, and when that comes due, they're not going to be able to refinance into comparable prices. And there's going to be an adjustment that needs to happen on that. So I actually think there's a shaking out that's about to happen. Uh, at all levels and you know in the u.s we're starting to hear more conversations about the public debt because that's another one the government debt um the amount of interest that's going to be paid on that debt is going up considerably so there's pressure that's going to happen in all of these areas and um, it will be for uh, for businesses for families and for public sector institutions to find new pathways forward um given this new reality and, and that will be uh, something that we will then have to take on board and think about how our policy trajectory needs to play out in the in the coming quarters. What is the market right? Okay, guys, let, let let's. Okay, I have another news here, guys. Today I'm going to hear news from what other analysts say. We saw people at Central Bank. Everything this video, guys. Most of them talk about the banks and. Uh, Let's hear about this one also. It's talk another punk and let's get in it. Now, misunderstanding about the Fed and other central banks. I think the major issues of the market has become overly data dependent, just like our central banks have become overly data dependent. So we're not looking beyond the next data release because we're worried about what will the Fed do in September, what will the ECB do in September. But as Christine Lagarde said at Jackson Hole last week, there are real consequential longer term issues that are unanswered and that we need to spend a lot more time on. But what do you think these are? are, are we start, I mean, we're starting to look some of the loan books maybe, you know, be a bit of concern. We're starting to certain, certain companies under pressure and defaults in Europe and in the U.S. So you have to start at the highest level, which is we are in a different global economy. We are in an economy facing insufficient supply as, to, as opposed to insufficient demand, which is what we had in the last decade. The minute you start with that, then rates are going to be higher for longer. Then you have all the commitments that were made when rates were very low that have to be refinanced, whether it is commercial real estate, where there is the indebtedness of certain companies that have to be rolled over. And then if you keep on going, you end up with three very different risks for the U.S. It's about financial fragility in the non-banks. For Europe, it's about stagflation. And for China, it's about deflation. And it's a very different fragmented outlook than what we've had before i mean for the us it's basically shadow banking that you worry about how, how difficult how ugly could could it be if we have some kind of financial event so the good the good news it, it shouldn't be ugly because a lot of these things are refinanced over time they don't fall immediately unless like we saw in march the positives or someone else worry but commercial real estate happens over time corporate refinancing happens over time um so the problem is that if the markets don't fully understand that, and then you get the drip, 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 and then suddenly there's, there's a critical mass. But I, I think we, ha we have time, but the reality is that central banks are just catching up to the fragilities in the non-banks. They understand the banks relatively well. It's the non-banks that they're having problems with. But think, what can they really do about it if they still have to stick to 2% inflation? Should, should they, you know, without saying it, maybe stick to 3% inflation or trying to get it down maybe at a slower pace than they're currently trying to? So that question is being debated hotly among economists. Central bankers don't want to touch it. We heard Chair Powell say 2% is and will remain yeah. the inflation target. In reality, it is an open question. What is the right inflation target in a world where the supply side is changing? And it's changing on account, as you know, of many things that are multi-year. But why do they not want to talk about it? Because it's a credibility concern if they start talking about it. Yeah, history is full of examples, unfortunately, where a central bank changed its inflation target when it has missed it. 
and that de-anchors inflation expectations. So if you've missed your inflation target for so long, which is the case for the Fed and the ECB, the last thing you want to be seen to do is to change your inflation target. Yeah, that's... Uh, we continue to see this slew of measures. Uh, okay, guys, that's the... You saw the news about uh, what uh, banks and the uh, red hike also. And they have another also another news for bank from Chinese. So we need to hear... Remember, today is a uh, Fed meeting, and also that's why they are always looking at banks, how the banks are going to act, and let's hear about this one also. Coming out of China to try to support the economy, try to support the stock market. So how have you really repositioned in the market? We have remained overweight in China right throughout this turmoil. And, um, you know, we believe that while these measures that are being taken, and particularly those supporting the stock market of late, are important, um, the main job in front of the policymakers in China is to restore the confidence of the consumers, to restore the confidence of private investors, and of course, the overseas investors into the financial markets. Um, as far as our China allocation goes, the most important change that we've made are to move away from the Chinese banks and more into Chinese insurance, um, because we believe that in trying to support the property sector, um, the banks which are cutting the mortgage rates and other lending rates now, um, that could lead to significant dilution in the net interest margins going forward. Asset quality for the banks is also on the ascendance. And these two risks basically weigh on our asset allocation, while the, the demand for the fixed return products of the insurance companies is likely to see again going forward. So, you know, that's uh, something that investors would have to weigh going forward. Our stance in China remains constrictive but selective. Yeah, we just heard from Bank of China lowering their deposit rates by as much as 25 basis points. But all of this, of course, really stemming from the property sector, right? Despite the fact that we continue to see those support measures, is there anything in that industry that you might like? Um, we are. We don't have any exposure in the Chinese or you know, in the Great China or North Asian property sector right now. Um, we think that the concerns surrounding over leverage and historical overbuilding in that property sector are likely to last for a while. So while these measures are being undertaken, um, it would be difficult for the you know the turmoil or the problems in the property sector to be. Uh, so uh, another one, guys, what I want to show you, I want to show you why people are predicting that uh, Fed may be going to... Fed we stop. see a rebalancing in the labor market. We to see stop. from this week's data Let alone I... that labor is not as in demand as it was. We also saw pretty benign inflation data today. Is the Fed's job done? Well, that's what Jerome Powell would like to know. Um, it could be. They're right on the verge. If you have this sort of image of climbing a hill and you're sort of right at the top and you don't know whether you should go a little higher or a little lower, that's about where the Fed sees itself uh, right now. I think there's a reasonable chance, but probably less than 50%, that they're done. My best guess is they're going to go up another notch, but it's a guess at this point. How long do you think that we're going to sit at terminal before eventually they normalize? I think that will be a while. Unless inflation behaves somewhat differently than most people think, that is to say, falls by a lot pretty fast, I think they'll be up in the range where they are now or maybe 25 basis points higher or 25 basis points lower for a while until they're pretty confident that inflation has stabilized. Let me say at 2%. I don't necessarily mean that Jerome Powell was, if Jerome Powell was talking uh, to you right now, he'd probably say something a little differently. But when I say 2%, I don't necessarily mean 2.0% exactly. It's unrealistic to think a central bank can hit a target that precisely. But, you know, in the mid to low twos, uh, I think they'll be happy 
to get there and wanting and want to see if the economy is going to stay there rather than inflation go up again. Uh, thank you. The strike. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. So. <laughs> The only thing that I was looking today, I was checking dollar and the Bitcoin. So, guys, for me personally, I'm looking stock is go up because dollar is starting declining. Remember, the dollar guys showed some weakness. Even now, you see very well, dollar is coming down, and uh, you need to buy stocks right from now. And uh, I think you have already, guys. You have some the uh, compar comparison of the when dollar is going up, uh, big tech coming down. Now dollar is coming down, big tech is going up. So let me show you like example. I, I will use uh, Apple. You see, Apple right now is killing it because. Um, let me see yeah i'm targeting apple before i'm targeting apple right now 220 and uh, you see apple when apple coming down uh coming down from here dollar is moving now dollar is coming down apple is moving up thank you so much guys and have a nice day bye